Hi again, folks. I'm Greg Flynn, and welcome into this edition of This Week in Pearl. We've got an excellent show lined up for you today. Joining us will be the Pearl Public School Superintendent, Dr. Ray Morgino, and we've got some hot news about some new COVID-related protocols that they're going to have in place. Unfortunately, yes, it means masks are back, at least for the foreseeable future, and he's going to talk about that, plus what the rest of the school year has in store for us. Then we're going to go back in and visit with the M Braves on the Mississippi Braves Insider with the voice of the M Braves, Mr. Chris Harris. We'll be back with all that and some more on This Week in Pearl. Hello, I'm Mayor Wyndham, and I'm thrilled to show you the city creating its own future. Pearl is located in Rankin County, the fastest growing county in Mississippi, and there's no question why. Access to great schools, even better shopping, and unbridled beauty make Pearl a town that truly embodies its name. And with a truly exceptional team of first responders, public safety is another key component of our success. With fantastic housing opportunities from quaint suburban neighborhoods to gorgeous lakefront properties, there's a place for you here in Pearl. You can't beat the location. Right outside of Pearl is the crossroads of the south where Interstate 20 meets Interstate 55. From here, you can travel anywhere within the state or the country. Or you can choose to stay right here in Pearl to enjoy a Mississippi Braves baseball game or experience the small town atmosphere, community pride, and heart of the local residents. Well, welcome back into This Week in Pearl. I'm Greg Flynn, now joined by our illustrious, the doctor. He is Dr. Ray Morgino, the superintendent of the Pearl Public Schools. Doc, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing fine. Thank you Excellent. for having me. Well, I, I, you know, we got to start off with the uh, elephant in the room or the little COVID ball in the room, I guess we should call it. And, um, you know, the school board voted uh, just this week to uh, have kids at all levels put masks back on for a while uh, while they're indoors. Is that correct? That is, yes, sir. Uh, kids and adults. Um, we have, and most, honestly, of course, we've just been in school for three days at, at this point, but uh, with the uh, growing numbers and the change in the quarantine rule, uh, we felt like it was the best. The State Department of Health came out with, uh, if everyone is masked up in a classroom or what have you, that uh, if, let's just say, I get COVID this week and I don't realize it and I come to school Monday and I'm sitting next to you and I'm not masked up and then all of a sudden I find out that I'm COVID positive. Well, now you have to go home where if we're both masked up, you don't have to quarantine. So it's a, um, an effort to try to be able to, you know, cut down on my quarantines. And um, so that was a uh, kind of a game changer when the Department of Health uh, sent that out to the school districts. And so um, we're going to look at it. I know there's, you know, strong feelings both ways on this and uh, we'll look at it over every few weeks. Um, you know, our intent is that this be a temporary uh, thing, but uh, obviously we have to see. I mean, it's uh, just um, numbers seem to be uh, going rampant across the state, and uh, we've already had some positive cases in our schools. We're, we have found through dealing with this last year, most people do not get it at school. It's normally they get it outside of school, maybe at a family event or what have you, or a friend event or whatever, and then it comes to school. But so. Our intent here is to try to combat it spreading at school and so that's our job we have uh, you know between students and staff almost 5,000 people on our campuses every day and so uh, with that uh, we have to take safety into account with this and so that's just um, you know where the uh, board fell on it last night but we do intend to look at it because we know there's strong feelings and you know, I know you and I joked about this. I've had the vaccine. I don't want to wear a mask either, but, you know, I will. Um, we have to try to, um, you know, be safe and just kind of get through this variant. You know, one of the things I listened to the, the recent uh, statements by Dr. Dobbs, uh, Thomas Dobbs of the health department, and one of the biggest things that I think people need to, to realize is if you don't have time and you don't catch a lot of the things that the health department says, is right now we just got to, it's we're back to where we were probably in March of 2020 where it's just let's slow the spread we've mm-hmm. got to slow it down because people just can't get treated in the hospitals right now I mean there's no hospital beds and that's ultimately yes we want to keep as few people from getting COVID as possible but you know it is a virus it is spreading and the reason that they're really pushing the masks again is to just slow it down so that if people need 
medical treatment that it'll be available in the hospitals. Sure. Yeah. Our uh, board attorney, Skip uh, Jernigan, he's uh, been a, a great help in his uh, in his non-paying job. He's the chairman of the board for Baptist Health Systems. And so, of course, we talk you know each week and just kind of get an update from their infectious disease folks. And um, he's been a great help of, of sharing just, you know, it, it's legitimate. The hospitals are full. And um, it's a, you know, I know a tough time, you know, for the hospitals as well. But um, anyway, I'm sure we'll all get through it and be better for it when it's over. We will. And I will say that, uh, you know, there was, as, as a parent that went through it, there is nothing worse than having to go back to distance learning. I just, it was it was a yeoman's job on every one of your teachers' part, your administrators' part. But there, it's it, there's just something about keeping those kids in the classroom mm-hmm. with their teachers and their friends, isn't there? Oh, definitely, yes. We uh, and that's our intent. Is uh, that's the main reason we want you know the kids to be at school, and they need that. They need the social time, um, and it's just better. I mean, it's it's obvious. Um, it's just better when you're there and uh, getting that face to face learning. So uh, that is our intent. We're going to do everything we can to try to do that. Um, who knows what the you know future holds? Uh, if we had to go virtual, we would, you know, that would mean there would have been an outbreak or something where uh, you would go for two weeks and then come back and kind of let it, you know, get the building cleared and all that. That's how you would handle that. But we last year did not have to do that in any building except the high school, and that was right before Thanksgiving for about three days. Um, so we were very fortunate uh, this past year to be able to have face-to-face learning all year. And so we're hopeful we can uh, do that again. But uh, this variant does seem to spread a little more quicker than the previous one. I thought it was interesting and, and very important in the statement that you, the school board released last night that, okay, not only is it very important for the kids to be in the classroom, but to keep this economy going and to let parents be able to go to work and not have to stay home with their kids factored into yeah. that decision. Oh, definitely, yes. I mean, that's uh, the hardest thing when uh, kids are a lot of times were quarantined, and many times they were quarantined and they were fine and did not catch it, but they were, you know, we have to go by the, a lot of times, these health department guidelines. And so uh, this is an effort to try not to quarantine as many kids so then parents can uh, continue on, and we want things to be as normal as we can try to make them. Well, let's try and take COVID out of the equation. You know, some of the goals that you were setting for uh, this academic year, Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the things you'd like to see happen? Again, let's take COVID aside. Mm -hmm. You know, certainly we want to keep that A rating for sure, right? Sure, yes. Um, That's always, we want to continue to, uh, you know, be one of the top performing school districts in the state. We take a lot of pride in that. Our teachers and administrators and students all work super hard. Our parents are always really good. We um, tell folks, you know, we do things a little differently in Pearl. We have to outwork uh, folks, and we really try to instill that strong work ethic in our students, and uh, it traditionally shows. Um, We did see uh, this past year with COVID, I think across the state, the whole state saw a drop in, you know, in performance uh, as far as test scores, which everybody expected. You had kids in and out so much, but... um, you know, so our goal is to make sure that we um, improve. And we did have some areas that we improved. I was so um, proud of our fifth grade science. Um, they actually scored better than they did the year before COVID. Hmm. So they, uh, I think, had like 75% of the kids were proficient or above, which is, you know, well above, you know, what the state average would be. And um, our graduation rate is at 95%, which is the highest in the history of Pearl Schools. That's so great. we're um, really glad about that. And just... Um, uh, gosh, fine arts. What, what I was most proud about this past year is our kids still were able to experience some of those things that you remember from high school. That we, you know, we had uh, five different state championships. Our kids were able to still compete and do those things that so many of them love, and that's that's what you want. You know, they were still were able to have prom. They were able to have a regular graduation. We were able to do a lot of those things, and we had to take, you know, did a lot of mitigating strategies, obviously, to do that. But that's our goal is to make sure our kids have a, a good experience uh, as best that, you know, we can make it uh, during these times, and we want to uh, continue to be competitive in everything we do. We finished eighth in the state in uh, 6A All Sports Award, and our goal was to be in the top five. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll continue to, you know, to try to push to be even better. But um, we uh, obviously want our uh, 
you know, our scores, we always set goals for, you know, each campus and for each department, uh, things we've worked with our, uh, our community, some of the businesses, we've updated our Pirate Perks program, whereas where we partner with different uh, businesses and they offer uh, a lot of times um, Good discounts, discounts. Yeah. to, you know, to employees and so forth. And it also it encourages our employees to shop local. And so uh, just kind of that, you know, just that team mentality. Uh, we also, uh, we were excited. We were able to uh, open the new multi-purpose building at the high school. So that Beautiful. was uh, really, Beautiful. really nice. And we will be uh, advertising for bids on a um, practice facility, which will, uh, it would consist of new concessions for the uh, home side at the football field. It would be new concessions, new restrooms, um, a new field house area, and then a covered uh, practice facility with the big nets of you know soccer practices out there. Um, a lot of times you have ninth grade football and varsity football trying to practice yeah. at the same time, and then of course uh, covered the band could utilize it. So it would be a, a really um, just a, a beautiful you know beautiful uh, addition to the facilities there. If um, you know we'll see how the bids come in and all that good stuff, but we are excited about uh, that project uh, that's uh, possibly coming up. We. Uh, also, just uh, we're able to put in the new active panels in every classroom in the district. Which a lot of them really had cool. those, but we've got uh, new ones in every class that didn't have the updated one. Uh, got that, and so. Um, so, why don't you explain to folks what exactly is an active panel? Well, an active panel to me, it's almost like a giant iPad. Um, you can sit there and just kind of push uh, the buttons, and um, you know, teachers can then get on and draw things, and they just—I guess you would call it just a fancy chalkboard, just in the digital you know, in the digital world, but uh, it's, uh, they use them every day in class, so that's great. You can have the kids come up, just like you did on the chalkboards back in the day, come up and work, you know, problems on the board and everything, so they're, uh, you know, really good, and they can take, save pictures on it and all that, and that's then, great. Uh, send examples of how to do homework and all that. That's excellent. You know, it's one of those things where you like to say, well, it's a good problem to have that we're growing, and we've got so many uh, new, more new students, but then you got to make room for everybody, and so you're trying to keep up, expand to keep mm -hmm. up with your growth. Sure, and that's yeah. tough. Yes, that's uh, and, and that's a good problem to have. I know we have some new um, additions to neighborhoods uh, going on here in Pearl, and so we always try to plan, you know, plan ahead when we see growth in the community as well. So that's uh, um, you know, constant. We have a strategic plan core team that meets uh, yearly, and we'll be meeting in September or October-ish to um, kind of, you know, push forward and always kind of think a few years ahead, and so we'll continue uh, with that. We've been able to fulfill a lot of things that have been on our strategic plan, and uh, so it's an exciting time to kind of look forward another five years. Well, we look forward to this school year. Uh, Dr. Morgino, you guys are just doing a yeoman's job. I know it was three days into school, and now here come more COVID rules, but Man, I, we could not be more proud to have you leading uh, our school system. We are easily one of the best school systems uh, in the state, and uh, you guys are, have a lot to be proud of. We are proud of our folks. We have some great kids and just a, a great staff and, and a great community, you know, and that's what we always say. Schools are nothing more than a reflection of their community, and uh, Pearl's a great community, and so we're very blessed just um, with the work ethic that our kids and staff have, and uh, they really uh, work together to, to hopefully provide these kids the best opportunities that uh, that they can give, and that's what, that's our charge, is to make sure that they have a, uh, a great educational opportunity that um, we tell them we want them to feel like they were the luckiest kid in the world to attend Pearl Schools. Uh, I think that right now, our parents and kids understand that. Yeah. Well, you come back and visit with us again. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. All right. That is right. Dr. Ray Morgino. He is the superintendent of the Pearl Public Schools. When we come back, a look at the Mississippi Braves, and they're back in town in a big weekend ahead out at Trustmark Park. So stay with us. This Week in Pearl continues right after this. Come find your taste buds at the Lost Cajun. Chef Charles is cooking everything to order. Cajun classics like gumbo, jambalaya, and red beans and rice. Pick your po' boy, shrimp, oyster, roast beef, or maybe gator. Proudly serving USDA farm-raised catfish. When you're done, loosen the belt up a bit for some homemade beignets. Dine in, take out, order online, and get it delivered. Reserve our party room for your group. Find your way to the Lost Cajun in Pearl and Byram. Well, welcome back.
Welcome back into This Week in Pearl. I'm Greg Flynn, and we are now going to go to the M Braves Insider and welcome home the voice of the Braves, Mr. Chris Harris, as it was a long two-week road trip, wasn't it? <laughs> it was a long two-week road trip. Certainly glad to be back here, and uh, nice to have a washing machine, you know, where I can uh, wash my clothes instead of, uh, you know, hitchhiking a, a, a laundry, you know, while I'm on the road, but uh, it's good to be back home, and you know, the team's playing good baseball, and, you know, this last now uh, five, six weeks of the season, we're in a, in a playoff push right now, and this team's still playing good baseball, tops in the league, uh, hit a lot of home runs, and, you know, it's a really fun group to watch. Plus, you know, we get back home and uh, kind of forgot about this series and how many great promotions were coming up uh, here in this first homestand during the month of August, but we have a lot of cool things happening, and, uh, a chance over this last month to really provide some some great inter entertainment. Well, I tell you, it was uh, it was a rough homestand for us the last time we were we were here as the Biloxi Shuckers, who were the last place, still the last place mm -hmm. team, really took it to us and <laughs> man swept a six game yeah. series, and then we went out on the road and man we're coming off a good uh, series against Birmingham, another very good team mm -hmm. where we won four of those games. Yeah, you know, baseball is a funny game. It really is a funny game. You can uh, be playing a team that's in last place, but you get those matchups. You get a, a few guys that are going through a little bit of slump, and that gets contagious. But, uh, you know, the great thing about this club is they took that sweep and went out on the road, as you mentioned, played Pensacola, who has some of the best pitching in, in minor league baseball, and, and took four out of six, and then went to Birmingham, won four out of six against the first-place team in the other division. A lot of great young White Sox prospects, including former and brave Tyler Nesloni, who kind of had some success against us uh, with a grand slam home run and, and a few other big, big hits. But, uh, I mean, anytime you can go on the road and win eight out of 12 games, that's that's phenomenal. And this team's doing it in a lot of different ways. I mentioned the home runs at 26 home runs in 12 games, uh, only allowed two runs in the last three games on the three game winning streak. I mean, uh, Spencer Strider had a 12 strikeout game on the road trip. Freddie Tarnock. Uh, had a 12 strikeout game. Uh, Bryce Elder's going six, seven innings every single time, and you have, you know, five guys that can throw 96, 97, mm -hmm. 98, and you know, and above uh, in this rotation. So it, it's a really fun group to watch. Uh, Eleven of the top 30 prospects in the Atlanta Braves organization is on this roster. Uh, so over. You know, my math's not great, but that's a third of the, a little over a third of the uh, their top thirty of the top thirty prospects, and uh, it, this is this is a really good core group that's going to uh, really make an impact on the on the big Braves and maybe some other teams down the road. Well, Chris, the the great part about this club is that they're giving everybody what they want. To the baseball purists, they're giving you the one nothing games, great pitching, but then to everybody else that just wants to see a lot of runs scored. We are blasting some home runs. Yeah, Steve, they're, they're hitting a lot of long home runs, too. I mean, uh, Hendrick Clementina hit one 456 feet that went off the property uh, in Birmingham this past Sunday. A 110 exit velocity. Grayson Genesta hit one 456 in Pensacola mm. that went over their scoreboard. I think it's the third scoreboard he's hit it over this year. <laughs> Grayson Genesta. But, uh, you know, this team's already surpassed the all-time Embraer's record going back to 2005 with 106 home runs so far in 84 games. Surpassed it actually in 78 games, the previous record, which was in 17, Acuna's bunch with 97. Uh, the all-time franchise record for home runs was set in 97 by the uh, Greenville Braves, which was 147. So this team's on pace for about 150 in 20 less games than that team did it back in, in 1997. So it's an exciting group to watch, and, and they teach all the, the new swing with a launch angle and everything like that. So uh, chicks dig the long ball, <laughs> and, uh, you know, announcers do too. Absolutely. Uh, you can work on that home run call a lot with this group. Excellent, excellent. Well, hopefully we get to continue that because those – Despicable Biloxi Shuckers are coming back, and we owe them a little something. Uh, but they I have to hear any more smack talk from Mike Guerrero, their manager. Oh my gosh! He uh, he texted me and said, "We're going to sweep you again." I said, "It's not going to happen." I pray not. <laughs> I pray not. But we're going to take care of our fans too, because we owe them a little something too. And you've got some great promotions coming up this weekend, starting on Friday. Yeah, I tell you what, jam packed uh, weekend with promotions. Every Friday, we've had some really cool giveaway items this year, and this one may be one of the more cool ones. This is a Christian Pache bobblehead doll. 
Uh, Pache, he featured these. I don't know if we can zoom in. You can see the dark shaded sunglasses there. Uh, he's diving for a fly ball out there in the outfield. Very Pache-like. Uh, presented by Trustmark. And uh, I think one of the cool things about bobbleheads is the collectible box. And this box is really, really cool. It's got a couple of photos of Pache on it. Uh, he got his number uh, there. But this is, this is just a really cool collector's item presented by Trustmark. And this will be to the first 1,000 fans on Friday, like the Home Shopping Network. <laughs> you know? Now, that is really, really cool. And that's that's unique, again, because most bobbleheads are, you know, horizontal or vertical. This one is, is horizontal where the, he's laying out. Most bobbleheads are, are straight up and down, and that's what makes that one really unique. It is. It is. And, of course, uh, you know, bobbleheads – in baseball and, and our unbelievable collector's items. So uh, we're looking forward to this. We think there'll be a big line early to get this bobblehead uh, on Friday. So make sure to get there early and, uh, uh, you know, take, take advantage. Of course, Christian Pache is still in AAA with Gwinnett, but we still think he has a, a great, bright future. So Well, he spent a, a little tremendous... time up this mm -hmm. year. He spent a little yeah. time in the majors. And uh, who knows, as they Braves do the playoff push. Mm -hmm. But definitely for years to come, we're going to hear the word, oh, yeah. the name Pache. No doubt about uh, it. Truest. Uh, let's go to Saturday. Let's go to Saturday. Uh, Saturday. Uh, first, let's talk first about the Braves will be wearing these special jerseys on Saturday from Gold Glove Charities. And Gold Glove Charities uh, is a organization that helps put on these special nights that benefit uh, pediatric cancer. And we did this in 2019, and we had a lot of kids from Children's of Mississippi come out. We'll have more come out. And the cool thing about this is every jersey on the back, this one hasn't been put on there yet, but we'll have a kid's name who is battling cancer. Oh, that's awesome. And each player will, will be paired up with a, a kid, and they'll be wearing that kid's name on the back of the jersey. And early in the day, we'll get to have a meet and greet. Um, not quite as much as we were able to do in 19. They had a big pizza party and everything. Just some great pictures came out of that. And it really not only uh, made a child's day or a kid's day, but the players just thoroughly took a lot out of that and connections that, you know, still remain today. But these will be auctioned off during the game, and they'll be benefiting uh, Gold Glove Charities and the Children's of Mississippi Batson uh, on Saturday. So that's cool. And then for you collectors out there, you know, you can bid on your favorite – Embrace jersey. Yeah. They'll sign it for you. And uh, I believe Bryce Elder is scheduled to pitch on Saturday as well. So it'll be a cool game used item. Then on Saturday, we're going to have the uh, Princess Night, kind of a daddy daughter uh, date night. Uh, there'll be some actual princesses on hand. Nice. Uh, to, uh, to take pictures and then finish it all off with, with post game fireworks on Saturday. So Saturday should be a lot of fun uh, with everything that we have going on with Bats and Children's Hospital and then. Uh, the jersey auction, fireworks, and, and Princess Night. You know, I will tell you that those jerseys, for folks to remember, um, you know, while you're – some of those jerseys, like a Shea Langoliers, I remember when we had the autism day, went for 300 something dollars, yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood. It, it Just remember that you're not just buying that jersey because that money, those proceeds are going back to the organization. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what's 100%, so great about it. Yeah. yeah. So it, you may be putting it down, and it may seem like a lot of money, but, man, it is – it's such a good cause where mm -hmm. it's going to like autism. They raise so much money for autism awareness right. and the team organization and this, I mean, to, to help fight childhood cancer, mm -hmm. man, I hope that these jerseys really, really go for a lot. Yeah. And I mean, just for a Braves fan, a collector's item, I mean, to hang this in your office, you know, with a, a player signature on it. I mean, even you can even get them and then get them signed later. If, if you don't like the guy who maybe you, you, <laughs> you, you bid and won the Jersey, you know, it, I mean, it's perfect, perfect for autographs and, uh, you know, that was, that was one of our favorite days in 2019, just to see the kids. We're going to, in the middle of, I believe, the fourth inning, we're going to have a home run for life. Um, there is a, a young child, and I, name escapes me at the moment, that will get a chance to, uh, who is now cancer-free, wow. who will get a chance to take a uh, run around the bases. Both teams will come out, run down, or be down the lines, and they'll get, they'll get to take a, uh, a, home a, trip, a home run lap. To a, a home run for life is what it's called, and I think that'll be, uh, something that everybody will really, you know, take in and, and remember. Boy, and then we're going to cap it off as always a yeah. Sunday with the Sunday Family Fun Day, and, and we got a giveaway. The first uh, 1,000 fans will get a team photo courtesy of Gringos Tacos, 
and uh, this will be also a great collector's item to collect autographs and whatnot for the 2021 Mississippi Braves team. So the first 1,000 fans will get this on Sunday, as well as, of course, the festivities with Sunday Family Fun Day. Um, the postgame kids are on the bases. Um, so should be a good Sunday at 2.05. Those are, those are great mm -hmm. just because when you want to yeah. take a look back, when we look at the, the big Brave alums that are there mm -hmm. now, when you yeah. think about Dansby and Freddie and Acuna and mm -hmm. Ozzy and Riley, you get to look back at this team and see who makes it up, and you'd be like, yeah, I remember them when. I mean, these are just great collector's items, too. I mean, you know, you get a chance to, uh, to maybe get these autographed and, and as well. But uh, team photo, first 1,000 fans on Sunday. And uh, this is, i tell you what, you know, I, we weren't lying when we said this is going to be a, a promo-packed <laughs> homestand because uh, we really have a lot going on and uh, opportunities for you to, you know, get some great items for free and then bid on these jerseys and uh, enjoy some fireworks and, uh, the Princess Night, which was really popular with, uh, I think, before the game. Uh, princesses, the youngsters that are dressed up, we'll let them, I think, parade around the field, I think, before the game as well. So uh, a lot of cool things going on, plus, you know, the great baseball as well. That is awesome. And we're glad to have you back home. It was two weeks. It seemed like a month. It seemed like you were gone a month, but we're back home and we're excited to have yeah. Trustmark Park alive with baseball. We're still here, and uh, we've still, you know, we're going to September 17th. Uh, this year, an extra two weeks, and then hopefully uh, starting on uh, the 21st, we'll have some postseason baseball, which, by the way, uh, we're in first place right now, and in the next week or two, we'll have some information about you being able to purchase playoff tickets as awesome. well. Awesome. Yeah, championship series would be a nice way to cap off our post-COVID year. Well, in the midst of new COVID, but it's... Unprecedented times, yes, Greg. <laughs> yes, these are seasons we will never forget, no, that is for no sure. No doubt. Well, Chris, we will see you out at the ballpark. Yeah, we will. Uh, and me and your... Christian Pache. You and Pache? Yeah. Hi, Chris Harris. He is the voice of the Mississippi Braves. You can listen to him all the time on 103.9 WYAB, even when you're in the ballpark or when you're just out driving around and can't make it out there. Well, we certainly hope to see you guys out at Trustmark Park. When we come back, we'll wrap up this week in Pearl with Pache. WPBP and PMB-TV would like to thank our latest sponsor, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts is located at 403 Riverwind Drive. With over 32 different types of donuts, they can take care of your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can now choose from their menu of sandwiches, wraps, and muffins. And don't forget the drinks. Along with coffee, espressos, and lattes for your morning drive, they also have soft drinks, cold brew coffees, and smoothies. The Pearl Pirates run on Dunkin' Donuts. Well, some exciting things coming up. We thank Dr. Ray Morgino for giving us an update on what's going on over at the schools, and we wish them nothing but success as the teachers, staff, and those students are really working hard here in the beginning of the school year. Thank you so much to Chris Harris. A lot of great things going on out at Trustmark Park this weekend. We encourage you to head out there, especially for that Christian Pache bobblehead on uh, Friday night and then the uh, children's cancer research jerseys that they'll be wearing on Saturday that you'll have the opportunity to walk home with uh, that night after the auction. want to remind you that you can stay connected with City of Pearl News anytime uh, simply by texting the word PEARL to the number 91896. That's if you text the word PEARL to 91896, you will get city alerts as we put them out uh, on things that are going on around town. You can also follow us on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter, at Pearl Government. There you'll find great pictures and, again, the city news that uh, keeps you connected with everything going on. And you can always visit our website, cityofpearl.com, get answers to any questions you may have, and find a directory of phone numbers to where you can reach out to any of our city departments with any questions or concerns. Well, that's going to do it for this week in Pearl. You know, we are a great place to live, work, and play, which is why we are known as the Jewel of the Crossroads. Mm -hmm.